Welcome back to the First Row Sports Show, brought to you by Pass the Pop, 250 in Main Street North in Dauphin, now joined by Brian Floyd, coming all the way from Ontario. Brian, how are you doing today? I'm great, I'm great. How are you? <sighs> I'm doing not too bad. The Raptors back in action tomorrow, but before we get back to the Toronto Raptors, I want to talk about some other series. You're obviously a huge basketball fan, so let's start with New Orleans and the Golden State Warriors. It was close over the weekend uh, on Saturday night, and then it became a blowout. Uh, what was really the downfall for the Pelicans losing that game so badly? Yeah, I mean, Golden State, even they, I guess, like oh, they show they can win without Curry, which is which is something they. Had, I mean, Golden State's beat up right now, and they're still winning games. Like when they win that first round series four uh, one. I mean, it's it just going into this round. I mean, New, the, the Pelicans just absolutely rolled Portland in the first round. You've got to be going into the second round series. You've got to be feeling good about yourself. And that's exactly where they've got to be because, I mean, Curry's coming back into the fold now too. And that's still even, – even a bruised – I'll take a bruised and beat-up Golden State team – over some of the best teams in the league any day. Now, with that being said, you talk about how good Golden State is, and rightfully so, and they seem to be rolling on all cylinders without Curry. Now, <laughs> probably not, but is there any way that now having Curry back in the fold after him missing you know, a significant amount of time, is that at all going to hurt the Golden State Warriors going forward in this series? I, I, I don't think you can... When you get your best player back, I don't think that's... I mean, people talk about that all the time. Well, is it going to mess up the chemistry? When you get your, your, your best player back in the court, uh, that's only going to give the guys a boost. I think they're going to need it in this series. Uh, realistically, I think the series we're looking at, I, I don't, if, if we're moving into to Utah, uh, Houston, I don't see Utah taking down Houston. I think Houston, the question mark was, can Houston get it done, uh, much like the Raptors? And they did. They rolled Minnesota in that first round. That's a good Timberwolves team. And uh, that's going to be that next round, that conference final matchup. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really seeing Golden State coming out of the West uh, and playing Houston in the next round, and that's going to be that's going to be the, the ser- maybe the series of the playoffs. Well, I think if Utah plays their absolute best, uh, they can get a game in this series. Realistically, the best team is going to win this, a best of seven. That's often what happens. Uh, the, the best team is going to win the best of seven. Now, let's look ahead, I guess, before we get to the Eastern Conference. Houston and uh, going to be taking on Golden State. Is this Houston's year with James Harden, the beard, Chris Paul, Clint Capella? Is this finally <laughs> Houston's year to get past, you know, Steph Curry, Draymond Green, and, uh, you know, Durant and Clay Thompson? Like, can Houston actually do it? this year and get out of the West? I think they have the lineup this year. I think James Harden is playing some of the best basketball of his entire career. And uh, I think if ever Houston was going to get that monkey off their back, I think this is the year. Uh, I just, I, Golden State, they still have the spark, but they don't look like they have the spark that they had. You know what I mean? Uh, this team, they look, they look beatable, whereas in maybe over the last couple of years, that was a team that to be feared. Not to say that they're not still to be feared. Uh, I just I don't think they have they they have the cast, but they just don't seem to have the fire that they've had. You know, I sort of think of the Golden State Warriors almost like the Edmonton Oilers last year. I think you know superseded, exceeded expectations and how good they were, and they just couldn't live up to that. And I think, you know, Oilers, obviously what they did this year, a train wreck, and I think that's the same thing with Golden State. They were so good last year, they can't possibly live up to that this year. With that being said, they still have a chance of winning the NBA Finals, but I just don't think, like you mentioned, they're not as good, and they don't look as good as they have in past years. Yeah, I think whatever team comes out of the series, and I mean, this is a tad presumptuous to say that those two teams are going to play in the conference final. But, I mean, for my money, if I was a betting man, that's who I'd be betting on. But uh, I, I really think the team that wins that series will win it all. Now, we talk about teams that are, you know, you haven't really been on the map at all. you got to talk about the 76ers, Philadelphia. They looked good against the Miami Heat. Yes, granted, the Miami Heat were all sorts of turmoil, but Philadelphia really rolled past them. Now they're going to be taking on a depleted Boston Celtics lineup. That series is going to start tonight. Uh, obviously, you're, you're going to be paying a lot of attention to this series because the Raptors on the other side against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, do the 76ers have a good chance of getting past uh, the Boston Celtics in this round without Gordon Hayward and Kyrie Irving once again? 
You know, I said going into these, this playoffs that uh, once the end of the se- when we came out to the end of the season and the Raptors were kind of watching who, who the seed was, I mean, with a couple of weeks left, Philadelphia was surging, and I said, man, I'd hate to play the 76ers in the first round or in the second round for that matter. I hope somebody knocks off the 76ers because I find them to be one of the – they have the firepower. They, they're a young team. They're fast. They're speedy, fast breaks. Uh, that's one of the best teams in the playoffs right now. I think if anyone was going to take out uh, one of those teams that we talked about out of the West, I think the 76ers might have the best chance. I really think it's it, – obviously, you've seen Boston. They have the firepower. Obviously, they're a bit dinged up as well. Uh, but whoever comes out of that series, man, it's going to be a grudge match. And, uh, I mean, they're going to be dinged up for – whoever comes out of uh, Cleveland, Toronto. So, I mean, that might be an opportunity for one of those two teams, but uh, one of the best teams in the East, for sure, I think is uh, the Philadelphia 76ers. You talk about players making the most of their opportunities when the star is injured. You talk about Terry Rozier. Um, The guy was absolutely lights out in their Game 7 win against the Milwaukee Bucks. Let's break down the series a little bit more. Um, You look at the 76ers, Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid, most notably. And then you look at the Boston Celtics, obviously Rozier, Tatum, uh, Jalen Brown's unlikely to play tonight. And then you got Horford. How are the Celtics going to have to go about trying to stop Simmons and Embiid as their one-two punch? Well, they're going to have to capitalize on bench points as well. I mean, that's one of the most important things when you get into the playoffs. Your some of your star guys obviously have to step up, but in when those, you know, I mean, these guys need a rest. It's it's a long season. You get into playoffs, and these are tough games, and especially a series that goes seven. Uh, you're going to have to have your bench step up and and make plays. Obviously, you're going to have to shut down their big guys, but uh, they're going to need. I I think if Boston has any chance of winning this series. And again, this is being a little a tad presumptuous. I think if Boston has any chance, they're going to need their bench to step, in a, step up in a big way. So based on how these two teams are playing right now, um, who are you picking and how many games? <laughs> Put you on the spot, um, I know, but that's what I like to do. I, I want to say, I want to say 76ers in, in six. I'm going to say 76ers in six. 76. Final, final, final answer. Seven six six. I'm gonna lock you on Seven, that. Seven six six. Lock me in. <laughs> and we talk about bench players, um, you know, playing well, and that's what you need in the playoffs. I think we got to talk about Delon Wright and the Toronto Raptors taking on the King. LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers starting up tomorrow night in Toronto. It's going to be crazy. You got the first seed in the Eastern Conference. You got the fourth seed in the Eastern Conference. You got the King. You got the Toronto Raptors. You're a diehard Raptors fan heading into this series. What are your thoughts going in? I think this is, uh, if ever Toronto was going to get it done with, uh, with the lineup that they have, uh, I think this is the year. I think Kyle Lowry has stepped up in a big way. You know, even when, when DeMar DeRozan has, has, has been having, even if DeRozan has an off night, you know, you got guys, again, it's that bench. I mean, this is the best bench in the NBA, one of at least the best benches in the NBA. Uh, now you got Van Fleet back. Uh, DeLon Wright has stepped up in a big way. You're going to need that bench to keep firing. Uh, I think DeRozan is going to just have to keep playing uh, the way he's been playing. You know, get into the paint, get to the line is uh, something that he's, he's done well. Uh, Kyle Lowry has been, been excellent on offense and defensively. I mean, that guy takes more charges than anyone in the league, and uh, he's going to have to do a lot of that against the King. But at the end of the day, like you mentioned, the king right there, how do you stop LeBron James? Like, the guy's an absolute beast. He showed that in Game 7 against the Indiana Pacers. If he's not on that team, Cleveland, I fully believe they're going to be abysmal. Next year, they're going to have a tough year. I know they got some good, uh, you know, young players, but I think they're going to be pretty bad next year while they rebuild. How do you stop LeBron James? Because if you stop LeBron James, or if you at least limit him, you're going to win this series. But how do you go about doing that? How do you stop LeBron James? I mean, the guy is unstoppable. I they just they need to capitalize. Um, yeah, I mean, defensively they have to be strong on the boards, but they have to capitalize on on offense as well. You know, they can't be missing shots or the giveaways that we saw in the first round uh, against Washington. They had some sloppy games, especially in Washington, where they were handing over the ball, and you can't do that with LeBron on the court, especially when LeBron's on the court. I mean, you know, you got guys who can shoot. You got J.R. Smith, and you got uh, Kevin Love, who I thought had a fantastic game yesterday, one of the best players on the court for sure. 
but I mean, you can't make those sloppy plays and those giveaways with uh, with LeBron around because. He'll capitalize every time. Now, what are you expecting from Serge Ibaka? Because we've seen in the playoffs already, um, you know, he's gone through his small slumps, I guess you could say. But he's also, you know, had the ability to take a game and put the team on his back with some big shots, a big block defensively. What are you expecting uh, from him, you know, when the series starts tomorrow? I think, you know what, I think Ibaka is a big time player. And I think that guy is a guy who steps up in in big situations. And uh, this is obviously, this is the Raptors' biggest test. I mean, with John Wall, everyone kind of counted out Washington, which I was surprised at. Washington didn't have John Wall for the entire season. They had him for a very brief uh, period of time, and I thought he was excellent in that series. And, you know, Ibaka, you you mentioned the slump, but at times uh, you saw flashes of brilliance, and that's the kind of player that I think Ibaka is. He's a big league player who steps up in big league situations, and, uh, I mean, there's no bigger situation than this. you got the Cavs in the second round. And uh, this is your chance to beat him. And uh, Abaka has to play better. Now you bring up John Wall. I'm going to want to talk about point guards in just a minute here. But because this is what I like to do, who wins this series? The Raptors against Cleveland, DeRozan, Lowry against Kevin Love, and uh, LeBron James. Who comes out in this series? How many games? Put me on the spot here. This is what I love to do. i got to be uh, honest. I love it. The Raptors have to be better than what they showed against Washington. Uh, Cleveland needs to be a lot better than what they showed against the Pacers. I want to say just because it's Cleveland, I think the Raptors, I think this is the Raptors time. And I'm, I'm maybe just saying this because I'm a Raptors fan. Uh, I think Raps in seven. That's going to be incredible. I'm going to take, take Raptors in seven because if they were ever going to get it done, this is the year. And I know a lot of people have already counted them out because that's, uh, that's what, that's what happens when you're, when you play in the North, and uh, I think that's a good thing because the underdogs, even even though they were the top seed in the Eastern Conference, the Toronto Raptors don't get any credit, and I think that's a good thing because I think they're I think they're about to show people. Now I agree with you that I think the Toronto Raptors are going to win this series if 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 it goes six or five games. You are not going to beat LeBron. In my opinion, you will not beat LeBron James when it goes to Game Seven. You saw what he did last night: forty-five points. Eight rebounds, seven assists, four steals. If this series goes to seven games, the Toronto Raptors will not advance, in my opinion. LeBron is just so good, especially in those. I mean, you talked about, we were talking about how, you know, Ibaka could be a big impact player, but LeBron is just, you put him in that situation. And I mean, there's a reason that he hasn't, he's never lost in the first round of the playoffs. And, and there's a reason for that. I mean, he's just such a big league player. And he never and will. And he steps up and he steps up in those situations. I mean, even when the team is having, I mean, you look at his, his points, the games that Cleveland won in that first round, LeBron had, what, 45, 47 points, uh, and they're going to need more of that from him. And, I mean, quite frankly, how many games can you, you put up that many points? The bench for the Cleveland Cavaliers has to be better, and their top guys need to be better. Uh, as mentioned, Kevin, uh, I thought that um, Kevin Love had a, a much better game in Game 7, but their guys have to step up. It can't all be LeBron, even though LeBron does put the team on his back. <laughs> I think that's uh, that's definitely safe to say. So, yes, I'll take Raptors in 6. If it goes to 7, Cleveland will win this series. Just one more thing before I let you go, uh, Brian. Just a reminder, the First Row Sports Show brought to you by Pass the Pop in Dauphin, 215 Main Street North. Pop, coffee, everything you need. It's the sugar fix in the parkland. I want to talk a little bit about... Russell Westbrook. Everybody calls him a stat patter. Everybody says nobody wants to play with him. Everybody leaves when they do play with him. Kevin Durant. Paul George is probably gone in the offseason. James Harden. All these good players leave him after they play with him for a couple seasons. At the end of the day, you look at his numbers. What are your thoughts on Russell Westbrook? The guy is a specimen to the game of basketball. You know what? I I've I've I can see both sides of this, and I've heard I've heard yeah I've heard arguments on both sides. Westbrook is is the type of guy who wears his heart on his sleeve. You're always going to get a good performance at a we- Russell Westbrook because he's got passion, and and you could see that. And like I don't I don't if you're alluding to the fact that I mean he gets like after the game for instance. Uh, when they were eliminated by Utah, uh, there was somebody sticking their hand in his face, and he's like, get out of here, and, and the fans are just nasty, and I think the onus has to be on the fans as well. If you're sitting, if you've got season tickets in the front row, and you're talking about the guy's family, I don't blame him 
for reacting. Well, of course he's going to be pissed off. Way, I, I don't blame him for reacting the way, he do, the way he did, but if you look at the stat sheet, Russell Westbrook is one of the best players in the NBA, and that's like LeBron, he's a guy that puts the team on his back. When other guys don't step up, Russell Westbrook steps up, and uh, he's, he's one of the best players for a reason. Uh, I mean, his personality, obviously, I don't know what goes on in the dressing room. There are some guys that left. I mean, you talk about Kevin Durant. I don't know if he left because of Westbrook or because he had an opportunity to play for a team that he thought he was going to win a championship. Um, but, yeah, Westbrook, he seems like maybe his emotions get the best of him. But uh, that's, you know what, that's one of the best players in the NBA right there. And that guy pay, plays with maybe more passion than anyone in the league. Packs the stats every single night. He's got hops. Absolutely. He can shoot. He can do everything. Brian, thank you so much for joining me from Ontario today. And uh, we'll chat soon. Thanks for having me, man. That was Brian Floyd on the First Row Sports Show. We'll be right back with Ryan McNally. You're listening to the First Row Sports Show.